Brandon Hargraves is the youth pastor at Faith Family Church in Milton, Washington. Him and his wife India spend much of their time finding ways to show love to the community and helping those in need. And he's came out with his coming book, Insurrection, the second book in the White Council series. And Brandon is on the line with us here. How are you today? Doing real good, real good, yeah. Surviving from the holidays, for sure. (laughs) So this upcoming book that you You've got insurrection. How would you describe it? It's a uh, it's a fantasy book. So this one of those books that like like Lord of the Rings or you know Brandon Sanderson's pretty big right now. Um, kind of more on those those lines. Um, there's all those outlandish, out of this world kind of things. But really, the whole idea was to um, make the book as the, the the most compelling to like draw into mental health and really try to help people there. Um, I grew up Christian and a lot of that circle of people that they, they read self-help books. So yeah. like the, how to, how to 10, 10 tips to get, get better at this or that. And um, that, that really only reaches a certain amount of people. Um, yeah. There's not a lot of people that really are going to pick up that kind of book. So I was just thinking on the lines of like mental health, there's so many people that struggle with suicide, depression, yeah. uh, that will never pick up uh, the, the, the self-help book that says how to handle depression. So I wanted to write a book that people would read outside of just that Christian circle yeah. that helps them deal with what they're, what they're handling, the, the suicide the depression, the mental health issues that's so prevalent in our society today. Is the intention that people will pick up the book, maybe not necessarily knowing that it's going to help them with their mental health, and it does? Absolutely, yeah. Because I feel like even if you don't realise it, there's a lot of people that are undiagnosed with depression, yeah. and they just don't even know it. But they, as you read the book and you start to really get into these characters' minds, they'll start to realise, oh, maybe I do kind of struggle a little bit, and maybe it is time for me to start looking into that part of myself and get healthier in that way. And there are so many fantasy books and series and all sorts out, and it seems to be very popular. So is it mainly the mental health thing that you think separates your book from all the others? Well, I try really hard to not just fall into that category. Uh, to create my own world, to really make these characters um, their own characters. Try to make it so that there's not another character in um, all the fantasy books that are out there. Because, like you said, there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, make them just like like I don't want to have just a Gandalf character from the Lord of the Rings. I don't, I don't want to just copy and paste that into my books because um, we've read that. We've already seen that. The Lord of the Rings does all, all of that perfectly. We don't need to read another one. Um, so I try to do. I, I, I'm tr- what I'm trying to do is make a good fantasy novel and then on top of that have all of those sprinkled in um helpful just kind of therapeutic ideas um that doesn't feel like hand-fisted in like shoehorned like oh that was really a little bit over the top we get i don't want to be preaching to them by any yeah i want to give them the tips and the tricks to help them with their own adult. and of course it's the second book in the white council series so where does the story go in this book yeah so the first one ends a little bit on a cliffhanger like there was this huge big thing that happened at the end. I don't want to give any spoilers, yeah. um, but people people died. Like there was a whole b- big to do. Um, and this book actually takes place a year afterwards. So it doesn't really develop what happened immediately after. It's kind of seeing how people have developed after a traumatic event, um, yeah. not just in that immediate moment, um, but even years afterwards, how that can still be affecting people's lives. Um, and then really what I, I love being able to dive into this book is the the political ideas of it. Um, the book's obviously called Insurrection, yeah. um, which it kind of paints its own picture. There's things going on that like the, the government that's in place is now having to struggle against these up this uprising mm. against the government. The, they have different ideologies and the main characters sitting in the middle like, I don't know what side I'm on, yeah. which I feel like a lot of people can relate to in today's day and age. Like, especially after these last few years, you we see, especially like I'm from obviously United States where you can't talk to any person and agree with everything. Yeah. Um, so, so looking at these from all of these different angles of, well, I don't know this person's they're they're right on these things, but they're really wrong on these areas too. But this person, they're right on these areas, but they're so wrong and trying to balance that. I feel like um, that's really what the book the theme of the book is about is the main character struggling on what side should she be standing on because there really is no white and black good 
evil in this so far. Yeah. And how much of the book would you say is based on real events? Because, of course, the title is Insurrection, and there was one a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's based on the real events. You might not be able to draw those exact parallels, but you'll be able to see it and it's like, oh, this reminds me of what we just went through. You'll be able to look at it like that. You won't be able to say, oh, that was this person or that. Like, you, there's no <laughs> exact, like parallels that way, but uh, otherwise it is. And how have you found writing the book? Because, of course, you've battled with your own mental health as well. So has the book maybe been a tool to help you with that? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I say to even my students all the time um, when it comes to um, the youth ministry that I run is... The more you try to teach about what you're going through, the more you even learn as you're, um, as I'm putting things down on the page and I'm writing through things and I'm giving these tips from character to character or these situations, I'm also processing like, well, how would I handle that? What am I doing with myself? Like, I can't just give people tips and not do them myself, right? Like, I've got to, I've got to kind of eat the food that I'm serving, make sure it's actually good food. Yeah. <laughs> So all of that to say, it's like, I've, I've grown a lot just in this journey of like, even in the the research of like, what, what do even professional health, health professionals say for like the, the therapists and the psychologists, like, what do they say how to get through these things? How can I, how can I do those things? How can these characters do those things? And how can I give those tools to the people that need them really? And do you think that the reader can have a similar experience to you if they've got their own struggles? Absolutely. Like, I really tried really hard in a couple of the chapters to give really, really practical tools. Like there's one chapter in the first book where we just say, just take a breath. Yeah. Like this person's going through this huge anxiety and they don't know what like the, their thoughts are bouncing off the walls. They don't know how to handle it. And one of the characters said, slow down really calmly. It's like, take a breath. And it just reevaluate. And, and that's just a, that's a scientific thing that yeah. it, it helps when you just stop for a second and breathe. All of a sudden, <laughs> the world gets into perspective a little bit. And it's like, oh, maybe the thing that I'm dealing with, it's still pretty big, but it's not quite as big as I was making it in my head. Yeah. Maybe the thing that I did, maybe it wasn't great, but maybe it's not as bad as I was making it in my head. Um, just really easy things like that. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes when you're in that situation, it's easy to forget to breathe. And yeah. also a problem shared is a problem halved and all of that. Exactly. This is the second book in this series, of course. Had you written books before this series? I've always had ideas for books. Um, never really got around to actually writing them. Um, for a long time, I was just like putting down work, like ideas into my phone of like, oh, this would be a cool fantasy thing like but it was all just for me like yeah. it's me telling stories to myself on break while I was working construction yeah um just to try to get myself through the day and finally the pandemic hit and I'm like well I've got all these ideas and now I've got all this time let's start writing let's put these ideas into practice like into, into words and actually get them on a page and see if the ideas that I have can actually help some people out in the world um so this book um there's it's actually a planned series of four and I'm actually even currently working on another standalone series so i'm trying to get a book out once once a year um that's all really handling different topics of the same thing trying to still push the health side of things because i just yeah. feel like if we're telling stories to tell stories then kind of what's the point <laughs> yeah. uh, there's enough stories out there. We can watch the same movie over and over again. But if, if we're getting something out of it, then that would really help. So I've got it. I've got books, I think, planned out for the next 10 years, if I can stay on wow. that schedule. Um, obviously, that's a really hard thing to do. There's some really great authors out there that have been working on their books for 15 years. Um, I don't know <laughs> their names, but um, the show actually finished before the author released his final book. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to keep on that schedule, but obviously we'll see how it goes. It's quite ambitious, but maybe the bigger the better. Who knows? Yeah. Is each book going to deal with a different mental health topic, to put it that way? Or is it still kind of dealing with the same things, but the story progresses? It's more the series that's going to deal with the different topics. Um, it's the same characters. I don't want to just make one character dealing with everything. Yeah. Um, that might be a little too much for one character. <laughs> and then obviously this main character is going to go throughout this series of four dealing with her own things. So we're just going to get deeper and deeper into that for this series. 
And then in the next series, dealing with a different subject of still that health, mental health, whatever. Um, so yes and no. <laughs> and how does the book actually deal with mental health, by the way? I mean, is it different characters have their own issues or is it another way? Yeah, so the main character is dealing with the thoughts of trauma. Like she, in the, right in the very beginning of the book, of the first book, she loses a lot of people that are really close to her in this tragic event. Um, and that, so she's going through all the stages, um, doesn't recognize it, doesn't even mention it in the book, but she goes through those stages of like trauma and healing of like, she's angry, she wants revenge. And then finally, it's like she finds people that she can relate to and she's happy be with that and um she, so she goes through all of those things so she's dealing with like more trauma and trying to deal with trauma whereas one of the main side characters is dealing with depression and really thoughts of suicidality um and then the second book really dives really really deep into that suicidality um kind of idea even in so much so that the preface of the book says if this kind of topic is not healthy for you to kind of think about and talk about without lashing out or making a decision you probably shouldn't you, probably, you might not want to read this book. <laughs> I'd rather someone put the book down than have a negative impact on them. Do you have plans outside of this series for more books or are you mainly wanting to write in this series for now? I've got plans for, I, right now, I think there's four different series in my head. Um, one of them is already, I'm, I'm about 20,000 words into it. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's a completely different um, idea, completely different series. So um, I definitely have plans for it, yeah. What kind of series do you think you're going to write if you can reveal such information? I've always loved fantasy. Um, it might not be the same kind of fantasy. There's all there's all these different kind of genres of fantasy, like um, Arcane that just came out, the League of Legends show. Um, it's, a, it's still fantasy, but it's kind of more steampunk, a little more modern. Um, so I, I might kind of dive into something like that. It might not always be like swords and shields and bow and arrows or whatever, but um, I definitely, I think I want to stay in that fantasy lane um, just so that even when readers hear my name, they can know, oh, I know, I know what I'm getting into. I don't want to necessarily veer off that course. So someone picks up the book and is like, oh, this one is fantasy. And now he's writing a murder mystery. What's that about? <laughs> just quickly as well, I noticed behind you, you've got what looks like a 2023 calendar, but is it on December for some reason? It is, yes. Um, <laughs> this is our first day back into office, so I haven't had a chance to... Um, this is actually December 2022. It's the first oh, right. day. So I um, haven't had a chance to really change the, all that yet. <laughs> so it starts in December. That's weird. Yeah. Is that an American thing or is that just a weird thing that that calendar does? It might just be a weird thing that that calendar does. <laughs> I, 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 this, we've got these calendars delivered to us. So like we just get them. So yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just that you could kind of have that calendar up and plan out in advance. Yeah. But yeah, it might just be a weird American thing. We do some weird things sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, certainly. It is actually quite a good idea because often you'd get a calendar for Christmas and you can't use it for a week. Exactly. So starting in December, that's a great idea, but you better change it to January now because oh, yeah. you don't want to confuse we're, yourself. We're running in head first. <laughs> yeah. Now, this book is, of course, called Insurrection, the second in the White Council series, and it's by Brandon Hargraves. Where are we able to find it? Right now, you can find it anywhere that books are sold. If you want the ebook version, that's on Amazon right now exclusively. Um, but the hardcovers, Barnes and Nobles, Book Hub, like all, all, all of the big major retailers. So, And I think we should point out as well that I take it you don't have to be suffering from any kind of mental health issue to actually enjoy the book. It's yeah. a good standalone fantasy book. Absolutely. And that was my goal in the first place is to write a good book first and then have all of that other stuff be secondary. Yeah. Uh, just because, like I said, if I just wanted to write all that other stuff, I could write one of those self-help books and yeah. reach that specific grouping of people. But that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to reach this grouping of fantasy readers and in order to do that you have to write a good book first <laughs> well many thanks for talking to us today it's been great to have you on and have a great year awesome you too thank you so much for having me